Oh. It's been a while and I've been busy with many different things. I will talk about them in a separate video or not. Today I would like to talk about something basic but something I wish I knew earlier back in the days. Animation essentials or how to improve your animations. What we will talk about can be and should be applied to anything motion related from primitive objects moving to complex character animations. Those who deal with serious animations know that anyway. Uh, so if you're that kind of person, you can skip this video. This knowledge applies to any software somehow related to animations. I will start in Cinema 4D, of course, why not? So first thing, I will change the frame rate of my scene. I'm usually working in 25 frames. And we'll extend our scene to 150 frames so that we will have solid six seconds. I'll drop in the camera, place it as I desire, and I will set it to 24 mils. Then I just save our project. So the first thing I suggest you to do is drop the null in and call it something like uh, animation container. You will see the benefit of doing that a bit later. Drop in the cube and put it under your newly created null. Okay, now we can start animate our cube. So I want this cube to fly from, from the left of the screen to the right of the screen. Let's uh, set up the middle position on a frame 75. My left position out of the screen and my right position. So if you will play it back, it moves along that uh, path it created automatically. Nothing fancy happens, it's just a regular animation. It's pretty nice and smooth. You can start moving keyframes on your uh, tiny timeline here and you will see that animation changes a bit. But how would you take this further in terms of movements? There is a thing in almost all the softwares that is called timeline. In Cinema 4D, you can access it through Windows and click Timeline F Curve. Here you go. I will expand this to the half screen so that we would be able to see everything I'm doing. To frame all the splines on your timeline, uh, hit H on your keyboard. You can expand this null and see that you have separate XYZ, uh, PHB, XYZ scale, everything, all the separate controls that relates to space movements in this timeline. You can select, for instance, uh, movements across X axis and start playing with it. Look what happens. The travel path starts to change because you're moving X keyframe. <laughs> And what this allows you to do? Well, that gives you maximum precision in setting up your animation. Let's do something interesting. I want this cube to quickly come from the left to the center of the screen, uh, float in the center a bit and then quickly uh, go to the right. Always remember that horizontal uh, data in timeline is time and vertical data is values. On the middle keyframe, we see that at frame 75, X position for this keyframe is zero. By default, Cinema 4D is setting up its traveling path in a spline mode. But the animation can be interpolated differently. For instance, if I will select all my keyframes and click uh, this linear uh, spline mode icon here, Cinema 4D will turn all my travel path into linear mode. And now if I will play, you see that it has those sharp edges on its traveling path. And this is like a primitive, primitive animation. Let's, let's bring it back to what it was by clicking this icon here. So I want the cube to appear quickly, hold in the middle, like that. So in the middle, you see that over time it stays on a kind of same value. And then quickly disappear. Look what happens. 
our path starting to change. And you can see that from left to right traveling, which is x-axis, is a bit slowed down in the middle. Now let's do the same for the y and z. Okay, here we go. So it travels quickly in the beginning, slows down in the middle and, and speeds up by the end of animation. Now I want to introduce some rotation to the cube. Remember that initially we didn't rotate our cube while setting up the keyframes. And it doesn't matter because I can do that in timeline. Check this out. Let's start playing with one of those values for rotation. You can also double click the keyframe and enter your value that way. See, the cube is now rotating. Nice, and I want it to keep rotating by the end of animation. There is a constraint button up here that would allow you to restrict uh, keyframe movements. By clicking this uh, horizontal arrows icon, I restricted the time movements of the keyframe so I can only change the value of it. So here we go. It, so it starts spinning slowly, then it spins quickly in the middle and keeps spinning a bit by the end of animation. I will keep playing with these rotations. So here we have it, our smooth and nice animation. Now it looks like it has some craft to its movement. It looks like it's a controlled movement and it's fluid, it's, it's nice. It's much nicer than what you would have by setting up the keyframes on that little timeline in a viewport. And trust me guys, uh, my animation started to change uh, seriously once I discovered that I can animate that way. Okay, so now I will explain why I suggested to drop a null and cube under the null. So that way uh, you animated the null, not the cube. You have the opportunity to change the geometry or whatever there is in that animation container. By holding control and clicking on platonic, I will land the platonic on the same position as the cube was. Now I will delete the cube. Check this out. And we have the same animation with the platonic now. This is the thing to consider when building your scenes. It just gives you more, more control and flexibility to, for changes. You can quickly change the geometry to whatever is needed. So here you have it. Start using these timeline features because they will really, really enhance the look and feel of your animations. Just to prove my point that these are controls that are available in any animation related softwares, let's quickly jump in After Effects. A new project. Let's make a new comp. Let's draw a cube, center anchor point, center and view. Well, for example, let's start with rotation. So the key, beginning keyframe in the middle, I want to spin it uh, to 360. And by the end of the animation, I wanted to spin uh, uh, 90 degrees more. Unlike Cinema 4D, by default, After Effects sets up linear keyframes. Let's also set up some position keyframes. And just a quick tip, in order to have all that control over splines in position, just uh, uh, right click on position and sh click separate dimensions. This will allow you to control X and Y separately. So middle position is the center of the screen. By the end, I want it to go to the right. And in the beginning, I want it to appear from the top. Let's enable motion blur. Here it is, linear movement. Nothing particularly fancy. Here is that um, spline icon in here. Click it and now you enter the spline mode in After Effects. By selecting your keyframes, you now see those splines and you see that they are linear. You can start selecting your keyframes and uh, change their interpolation by clicking these icons here. You see these ones are now smoothed out but the X position is still linear. Let's select it here. Right click on a keyframe, keyframe assistant, easy ease. And now this, uh, this one is smoothed out as well. 
And now we can start doing the same thing we did in Cinema 4D by adjusting those uh, spline handles. And you can see that it dramatically influences how your animation works. It's, it can have the absolutely opposite effect from what it was before. Let's convert, convert these keyframes into splines. So you see it's now absolutely different from what it was before. Well, anyway, that was just an example to prove my point that, that these controls are available in any software. As a final one, let's quickly jump to Adobe Premiere. New project, okay. File, new sequence, okay. And let's uh, type something in the center of the frame, test. Effect controls, center the text. Uh, Windows, Essential Graphics, Edit. Now you can center it like that. Cool. So I want this text to appear from the right. You have position controls by default available to you, but I will suggest something better for you. Go to your Effects tab, type in Transform, and drop this effect on your layer. In Effects tab, let's scroll all the way down. Here are your position controls. So second one will be our final point, and it appears from the right. Let's play it. Here you have it, your linear movement, and you see that your keyframes are linear, same as in After Effects. Let's select them, right-click, Temporal Interpolation, Bezier, which is a type of a spline. Play it now. Um, it's there, trust me, it's just not that obvious. Expand the position control and here you have it. The same handles you had in After Effects, the same handles you had in Cinema 4D. And now let's play it. It slows down by the end of animation, which is what I wanted to show. The reason I asked you to drop that transform effect is that this one has the shutter angle control. And if you will set it up to 180, and play your animation, you will notice that now you have motion blur, which is good to have inside of Adobe Premiere. Just a quick unrelated tip. These timeline controls are available in any software, literally. Here's a quick example in Fusion. Same stuff, same controls. It has a dedicated spline tab to control those splines. A 3D Max, Maya, Blender. Here you have it, I mentioned it. If you haven't used that uh, method before, now you know how to fine tune your animation. Having that much control over each keyframe allows you to polish your animation to the max. You can use those spline animations not only on the object movements, but on the parameters animations, how the light lights up. I use that in this shot, how your objects are flying through space, how deformers or effectors are moving in Cinema 4D. This is how I animate my cameras, my objects, parameters, everything. It wouldn't be possible by just setting up the keyframes. Character animations, for instance, have hundreds of those splines in a timeline and it looks manic when you look at it. Today we touched the conceptual part of that and I hope you will start implementing this in your workflow. Hit the like button if you learned something new, subscribe if CG and VFX is something you're into, and I see you guys soon, hopefully. Missed you. Peace.